Hello, my name is Connor Smith, and welcome back to another episode of Data in the Wild, hosted by Data Meaning. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below and click the bell to turn on notifications to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. Today we're covering how to use the run command tool to write to a copy of a formatted template file. You can see here I have my template file, just a simple Excel file that I'll be working with today. It's located here in this template folder. You can see that it has some simple formatting, just headers are yellow. I want to be able to copy that template file from the template folder to my output folder instead. And once I've made that copy, I want Alteryx to then write to that formatted copy. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close my template file and we'll jump in to Alteryx. You can see here in Alteryx, I have my template file path. So that's where my template is actually located. You can see I'm using relative paths. So we'll kind of add some syntax here, the engine workflow directory, kind of make that, that relative path more absolute. And I have my output path. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. It's a relative path that will make absolute. So with these two paths in mind, both my template is where I'm going to move my template to. I can go into a formula tool. and I can combine these paths together as part of my batch syntax. Okay. And I'm going to use batch code to make the copy of my template and move it to my output file location. So this batch code is very simple. I'll break it down down here. It starts with the word copy. And then in quotation marks, you see the template path. And then there's a space. Well, there's closing quotes, there's a space, opening quotes, and then you see my output path, where I want, not just where I want that output file to be, but also the new name for that output file path. Okay. With these two paths and the word copy together, we now have a column that contains our batch code. We're going to drop the other two columns using a select tool. We'll just get rid of those other two columns. And then we'll, we'll pull in the run command tool. Just search in my search bar up there. Run command tools, not too difficult to work with, but there are some little things you'll want to be aware of. I'll start by configuring the output. And so what this output is, is you're taking that code you've written and you're outputting it to a BAT file, a batch file. Okay, and that file will be an executable file. So we'll start by naming our file and I'll just name this, I'll just do this. I'll do your name here. You can name this batch file however you'd like to name the batch file. And you do whatever you want to name it as, and then you do BAT. Now, if you notice, if I click anywhere, I can't typically get this to refresh. So what I'll typically start with is actually CSV, and then I'll click around. And once I've clicked around a couple times, it will automatically choose the file format as CSV. So I'll change that CSV back to BAT. I'll click around again, it'll do some refresh here, but it's gonna remain now as a CSV file. For the limiter, we we'll want to do a backslash n so that every new line in our code, in our case, we just have one line. But if we had additional lines, every new line would be its own new line in the bat file. Again, the bat file is an executable script. For option four, first row contains field names. We want to ensure that this box is unchecked. This ensures that the copy CMD, the header here, is not written to our bat file. We do not want that to be included as part of the file we are creating because it will not execute well. And then for option five, we'll want to make sure we change this to never quote output fields, set that to never. So a couple things you want to ensure you have. One, you have the dot BAT extension. You output this as a CSV file using delimiter backslash n. Make sure option four is unchecked, set quotes to never. With that all configured, you can press OK. And now we've configured it to create this batch file. 
Now the batch file is going to be created, it hasn't been created yet, but it will be created upon executing. Now you won't just be able to create the bat file with the run command tool, you have to include both the optional creation of a file, but also a mandatory execution of a file. So I can copy the name of my file here and paste it down here. So let's me, there you go. I copied the file I created and pasted down here. So now, not only will the run command tool create a batch file with an executable script that we dynamically built, but it'll also execute that bat file for me. I'm gonna take this for a test drive, press run here and see if it works. Okay, now on my other screen, I did see the command prompt terminal pop up and show that the code was successfully executed. You can see that there's no errors on our machine here. So it's a good sign that the batch or the script did what we expected it to do. Now I said I saw the command prompt pop up on my other screen. If I wanted that to not happen, if I don't want this workflow to always show a command prompt, I can run that command prompt silently. So I can press run again and you'll you won't see, but I can tell you that that command prompt will not pop up on your other screens or your end users. All right, so now we can see again that that script ran successfully. Let's go ahead and take a look at File Explorer to see how it behaved. All right, so what we're seeing here on the output file location, that template file was successfully copied over to here. I can open up this copy of the template file and take a quick look and see what this output looks like. It's an exact copy. The only difference between this copy and the template file is the fact that we've changed the name and the location of where the file is. Now let's see if we can't get Alteryx to write to this template file. So I've already got it kind of set up over here. I'll go ahead and see if this configuration runs okay for us. It's just some same headers as a template and then the data I want to add into my output file. So we'll see if this will run the way I want it to here. Press run. Take a look, look at the output log here and see a couple things. One, in this instance, the run command tool has executed before our output data tool has. Now this is a really important, crucial step. You'll need the run command tool to execute before you write to your output. Because otherwise, if we reverse these roles for a second, if I wrote to my output, before that run command tool executes, what would happen is I'd write my data and then the run command tool would make a copy of my template and overwrite the data I've written. So it would make a copy, paste it into that same folder that I've already written to and basically get rid of all my data. So you wanna make sure that these run in this order. Take a look at the output file. You can see that the output file does successfully contain the headers with the new data outputted from Ultrix. That wraps up today's quick video on how to use the run command tool to write to a copy of a formatted template file. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted. Thank you for watching.